to another home practice. Um, today we're going to do restorative poses uh, using a certain amount of propping. Now I'm hoping that you can, uh, I know that not everyone has a yoga chair, um, and but everyone I'm sure has two upright chairs. So uh, I'll try to suggest alternatives to certain things that require a specific yoga chair. Otherwise, you can just use two, uh, any upright chair, two kitchen chairs. The other uh, prop is I'll be using a bolster, and uh, I will I will show how to make a bolster from three blankets. And again, those would be household blankets if you don't have a bolster um, for a few of the poses we're going to be doing. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to go back, return today to the theme I talked about a couple of weeks ago, which is oneness. And kaivalya is a word for both freedom and oneness. And there's a beautiful sutra in the first chapter of the Patanjali's Yoga Sutras that says to prevent the obstacles or to overcome the obstacles. And those others, there's a whole list of obstacles in chapter one, and they include sort of obstacles of habit, obstacles, psychological obstacles, physical obstacles. And uh, in some ways they could be considered obstacles to experiencing integration or um, wholeness or healthiness. And he says to prevent these obstacles, to overcome them, for the purpose of preventing these, eka tattva abhyasaha. Abhyasaha is practice. Eka is one, and tattva is thisness or thatness. Tat is that or these, and tattva is thatness, which one could understand to be reality. And Eka tapa is the one thatness. So the this practice that we do here is very much about going into the tattva of our own bodies and sensing inwardly, feeling inwardly, tracking, well, what's happening in me today? And as we do that, it's also an anchoring of our awareness in really the ground of ourself, the earth of ourself. So uh, that is so helpful at this time and that with all the change in the world that we are going through. So I thought we would start with chanting that sutra. It is Sutra 32 from uh, the first chapter of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. So first come into the ground of your seat, the ground of yourself here. Feel where your sitting bones come uh, meet, meet the blankets and imagine that you are going down past the blankets into the earth with your sitting bones. Feel the thigh bones move in to the hip sockets so that you actually create a kind of firming around the hips and see if you can even feel with that movement of the thigh bones into the hip sockets a uh, coming towards each other of the sitting bones. And then you may be able to distinguish between the outer sitting bones and the inner sitting bones. Try to feel that the outer sitting bones go down and the inner sitting bones rise up. And if that just sounds like gobbledygook to you and you can't picture that, just let it go. But know that from the going down, there is a rebound, there is a rise up that comes from that. So try to sense that and try to sense a rising up coming 
along the sides of your spine. So your attention is really going um, uh, not just to the outer body at this moment, but to the, as though there were two corridors up along the sides of your spine. There are all kinds of muscles running up uh, along and down the sides of the spine, including the psoas muscle. So imagine the long, sort of like as though you had two ribbons, two long ribbons along the sides of your spine, and those are lengthening. Keeping this press down, or if you're sitting bones now, think of the ribs and the rib cage, and lift up the rib cage off of the hip so that you're lengthen, making length from your hips to the lowest ribs. Let your breath flow. And see if you can feel the breath move all the way down to the sitting bones. And as you exhale, can you feel the breath move through the tallness of yourself? your palms together in front of your body. Let your eyes close. And just feel the state of yourself, the inward weather of yourself. What does sitting still feeling inwardly, sensing inwardly, what does it reveal this morning? What information do you get about that inner weather? Even in this initial sitting. Follow the movements of your Now we'll chant Om three times in unison, and then in call and response we'll chant the sutra about Ekatatva, the one that. Now in call and response. Tat pratiche, tat pratiche, dartam, dartam, eka, eka, tatva, tatva, abhyasa. Abhyasaha Tat Pratishe Dartam Tat Pratishe Dartam Ekatatva Ekatatva Abhyasaha Abhyasaha Tat Pratishe Dartam Tat pratiche dartam ekatatva vyasaha ekatatva vyasaha tat pratiche dartam 
bow your head to your heart release your hands to your thighs and then lift your head and gaze open to your eyes so first I'd like to show you uh, the rolling of the blankets I might put the on as well I want to show it uh, the tightest you'll make your probably tightest roll if you open the blanket the whole way and if it's a um, household blanket, you will uh, fold it lengthwise first, and that's just likely to end up to make the more the firmer a firmer bolster. And I just have to get my third blanket. <clears throat> and if you have a bolster, there's no need for you to do this. Um, However, if, you, if you're sort of using up all your blankets doing this today, you may also want to have a few pillows or, um, or towels available. So I'm just flipping over the end and over the, this whole length of uh, these three blankets lying on top of each other. I roll it as tight as I can. Now, uh, and so you can see that the three blankets makes a fairly nice, um, nice circumference there, a nice roundness. So I'll go ahead and use that as my bolster right now since I went ahead and made that. And um, I don't know how many of you have extra sticky mats. Another thing that can be done is rolling the sticky mat around it. <clears throat> then you're going to take either towels or flat pillow and you have one for your head and you could have to support your thighs you could take you could I know some of you know how to strap use a strap for the support of the thighs this pose by the way is Supta Bada Konasana lying down um, you know what you could do as well you could actually press the timer So, um, so lying down, bound ankle pose. So I'll show you how to use the blocks if you're going to use blocks to support your legs, or you could just have little rolled towels, or you can take a longer a blanket, uh, opened up some, and then folded. I made a little tripod, and I sit away from the edge of the support, and that's because I don't want to have too big of a, a a push on my sacrum. And then I pull my heels in, I place the ends of the blanket under my thighs, and then I lift before laying myself down onto the bolster. Now, this bolster is actually firmer than the bolster I've been using, and it's, it's like even higher up, which makes me think that uh, some of you might be happy experimenting with just a two blanket bolster. Um, and also you could just, if it just feels like, oh, this is just too high for me, you could unroll it. Now, I, I'm going to smooth my buttocks towards my heels and make sure I have a support under my thighs. And the other way you could do a support under your thighs is with two blocks. And we're going to just start here, have the head support under your head and your neck. And we're going to actually... Uh, stay for a timing here. I'm going to set the timer for four minutes. And setting the timer can be a nice, uh, 
sort of assist assist to letting yourself release into a, a, the pose. So we're going to actually set the timer today. And feel first in this pose how open your chest is, how the support both lifts and gives a sense of a widening of the upper chest. Let your collarbone spread here. Let go in your eyes and in your jaw. Let go in your abdomen. Feel if there's any sort of holding or tightening at the back of your neck and let the occiput lengthen away from the base of the neck. It's not really that you're pushing it, you're just al allowing it to stop shortening and tightening. And if you feel that there's a strong tendency for the back of your neck to be tightening here, you, you can experiment with taking your head slightly higher. Arms release, your legs release. Let the inhalation move all the way down to the lower body. You let your lower body Fill with air, as it were. And let each exhalation be soft and smooth. really seeking to control the breath here, but to observe it and to let it and to notice where is it attracted to you? What does, what parts of yourself does your breath help you experience here? Can you feel again the, those long lines on either side of the spine? like two channels running up and down the sides of the spine. Be soft in your abdomen. any areas in your body that seem dark or hidden from view. Just notice that if there are. Please what time would be so interesting. I didn't think it was quite four minutes yet. So in your home practice, this is one of those poses that one really can time for quite a while. You could stay here as long as four minutes, five minutes. And you could stay here longer now if you like. But we'll be coming out, or I'll be coming out now. So stretch uh, your legs straight here. And if you, were, you did put on a belt, take your belt off, stretch your arms over your head. You can hold your elbows and take your elbows down toward
towards the bolster. Feel how the back, the muscles around your shoulder blades activate there. Allow length to come into your armpits. And maybe with the, with the whole chest lifted in this way, you might have a little bit more sensation of sort of like the, like the shutters being open. A springtime day. And now bend your knee and remove your props. Roll over to your side. And we're going to keep our bolster where it is. You might need an extra blanket. And we're going to come into a down dog with our head on the support. And we're going to set the timer for two minutes on this one. And you do not have to stay for two minutes. If you want to uh, just come down, we're going to come down into child's pose at any point and rest your head uh, on the bolster in child's pose. Prepare yourself for going up by planting the whole hand on the floor. Just connect especially down to the thumb side. Turn the arms. You could even do a little prep of bending the elbows down and keeping them touching the bolster, and then come up and try to keep them coming towards each other so that you feel the action of external rotation in the upper arms that we want in down dog. Throw your toes under and move into the pose. Take your time, because you've got two minutes here, to uh, sort of let yourself sort of open up into the pose. One way of doing that is bending the knees and pulling the sitting bones back. Let the head rest on the bolster, but if it's kind of sort of confusing to you how to reach the bolster, you could just do this without the bolster. So bit by bit as I stay here now, I'm going to try to keep the sitting bones rolling back as I start to move my heels, my shins, my knees, my thighs back. And then I'm trying to let go at the back of my neck so that my head accepts the support of the bolster. And I do not really consider this a, uh, I consider this a more advanced thing, letting the head down go to the bolster while still maintaining the pose. So please do just get rid of the bolster. Um, if, if it's just sort of introducing a lot of difficulty for you on this one. Let your breath move through your pose. Let your breath help you feel your hands more. The whole press of your hands, hands from the root of the thumbs to the outer palms. Move your triceps to the bone. Lengthen your biceps. So try to feel that the pose grows as you stay. And now we can walk our Feet forward to come out of it. You could also have gone down into Supreme Parasana. That's fine if you did that. Um, and then come into a little sort of loose, loose limbed, easy forward bend here. And again, I'm, I'm going to just have my knees a little bit bent at first here. And then I'm going to look forward, take my hands to my hips, and come up from that time I swung up from the hips. Okay. Now we're going to um, explore some more props. So I'm going to get, <coughs> where I'm going to start with two chairs. And for this first pose, any type of chair will work just fine. And they're going to face each other. Now, you could, uh, maybe I should have said this already. 
It's nice to put a mat on top of these. Fold the mat and put the mat on there. I have a second mat that I'm going to do that with. So the chairs do not need to be on a sticky, surf, sticky surface for this because the mat on top will hold them together. So if you only have one sticky mat, put the sticky mat on the chairs. And then I'm putting my bolster towards the front side of my chair, my two chairs. So what this is, is a, uh, another version of child's pose, or forward, downward facing uh, hero's pose, which is so nice if you have a knee injury. And I, I had a little knee something this past month, which uh, led me to value this, this variation uh, a lot. So I pointed my toes forward. When, when one first sits down, the toes tend to turn out. But this is going to actually be helpful for the whole shape of the pose if I point the toes forward and take them a little forward on my knees. Then, kind of like we did in Baddha Konasana, I'm going to press the forward or the edge of my bolster down and lift myself over the support. And you'll want to take blankets off. And, and then we'll do two minutes here, too. Um, to my, with my forehead on my uh, on a blanket, and I just made enough of, enough folds in the blanket so that my nose isn't pressed into the bolster. Now, you can also pile more blankets up on top of the bolster. You actually do want to feel pressure into your front body here. Now begin to notice where the breath moves in this shape. I feel the breath here very much attracted to the back ribs, to the back body. So feel a spreading of the back body with each inhalation. Exhalation, feel a softening. Let go in your eyes. Let go of the skin that's touching the blanket where your forehead is supported. And you track your breath all the way up to the very upper ribs underneath the armpits. Or I, I guess I really mean in this position, it's like they're next to the armpits. And those are the smaller ribs that come right up underneath your collarbone. We often don't have awareness of those ribs. So again, this is a pose. We only took two minutes in it. You really could stay. You could stay for five minutes. You could stay for ten minutes in that pose because it's it really is it is just comfortable. You're not working hard in that. Okay, now if you're just using an ordinary kitchen chair, this next pose uh, isn't isn't really going to work with this setup. So I would say just stay longer. Stay longer. Or go back, return to this child's pose, this lifted child's pose. But if you do have a yoga chair, you're going to come all the way out and then go all the way in. And as we did with our lying down bound angle pose with Dvada Konasana, we lift the ribs and lay the back ribs onto the support 
arrange the blanket under your head and neck. And then, so for me now, my the back of my pelvis and my buttocks are actually pushed onto my low back. So I'm going to lift with my feet and uh, smooth the buttocks towards my feet. And then I can have my hands on the side of the chair. I'm going to plant my heels in the floor and give a little press into the floor. And I'm going to keep that action going through the legs here. So this is not a completely passive pose, though it certainly is very releasing for my head and my chest. And again, uh, now I, the breath is sort of attracted to that long reach of the legs down. So see if you can feel the sides of your spine and as though the channels at the sides of the spine continue right through uh, your legs. We'll take three different arm positions here. First, the arms directly straight over the head. Feel how your, do let your shoulder blades actually move towards your fingertips here. Reach out through the uh, pinky side, the little finger sides of the hands more. That'll get, help you get that sense of the tricep moving towards the bone. Lengthen your biceps. Open your arms out to the side. And so, so from here, connect your sternum out to the fingertips and let your, your collarbones widen. You can actually start even reaching your arms downwards. And this can be nice to feel in different trajectories making a, a Y shape, I sort of feel different fibers lengthening out than when I'm directly out to the side. A little lower, that even brings a different sensation across the top chest. Bend the elbows, and now you're, you've got your arms in a cactus position here. Even that sort of shifts the experience a bit. And return to the first position, reaching your arms up over your head. And then let's finally bend our elbows and fold the elbows. Move your shoulder blades towards your elbows and down to the blankets. Keep pressing into your heels. Take your awareness towards your heels here. Is one heel sort of pulling back in towards your torso? Try to reach evenly out through both inner heels. Change the cross of your elbows. And then we'll come on up. You can hold on to the chair in front, plant your feet, or you can even Actually, it might be better to take the hands down by the hips. Press down with the hands as you lift your chest. If that doesn't feel good for your neck, put one hand behind your head and actually give yourself a little assistance and do more of a rolling up through the spine. That, that is also fine. Let's just take a little... Now, if you did not have a, um, a, a yoga chair, you can put your uh, legs outside of the chair and sit up on your bolster now. But if you have a yoga chair and your feet are, if you're turning through the chair, just stay here and plant your feet and take one arm in front, one arm in back and lift up your chest and turn. So just a easy turn here, twist. Broaden your collarbone. Come center and come back inside and I'm feeling my way all the way down towards my feet, I'm wrapping my side ribs around and then finally I'm 
feeling, oh, can I broaden my collarbones here? What do I do with my arms? Get that sense of what can one say? What that sense is. Sort of grandness. How grand. Open chest. And come center, and then carefully step your way out. We will put the second chair to the side for a moment, and keep one chair. So now take your sticky mat and place it over the back of your chair. This, this, this way is probably the best way. And we're going to use the chair for our Uttanasana. And we can go ahead and set up, do this for two minutes. Now, I think, well, many of you have done this with me in class. And you're going to basically uh, adjust the pose for your measurement of your body. So what I'm trying to do is get the top of the chair to come to the, what's what, what would be the fold at the top of my leg. So if I were to go bend my leg, that's where the fold is. And that's the point that I want to be at the top of the chair. So I need to widen my feet a little bit to get the chair to that spot. I am a shorter person. So it's very likely that you will be going wider than just outside the chair. And it, it, just go as wide as you need to go uh, to get to be in the fold. So now I've gone so wide that I'm above the fold. And that means that if I came forward, I would just be getting the chair pushing into my belly. And that's not what this particular support is for. I, am, I want to feel... And now I'm going to actually really, before we were like bending our legs in our forward bend, now I'm really pressing the ball mounts down, the heels down, drawing up from the arches as I come out over the chair. And I do want to feel pressure up at that fold. It's, it's sort of nice. It's, it's like it gives it a little bit of uh, education about to the joint. Uh, yeah, let yourself just be easy there if there are muscles that tend to get held over tight at your hip joints. Now, and so we're going to stay upright for a bit until you really establish yourself in your feet. Keep going to each foot. Are you putting equal intention in each feet? Big toe bone mounts pressing, inner heels pressing. Lift the arches up. Lift the kneecaps up. Draw up through your legs like you're, you are connecting the earth up into, uh, up, up to the hips. Now, reach out over your chair and come to where you can rest your forehead somewhere. That might mean that having a block might help you if you're a longer, uh, if, you're a, if you're a longer person than me, you might, it might work better for you to have a block in some way or like so. So you can experiment with supporting with a block. For me, it, it, it just so happens on my body that it works for me to bring my forehead to my forearms. So see if you can find a place that you can rest your head easily or stay upright in the pose. And there's lots of benefit for that. Now press, go back to your feet again. Find that press through your feet. They may feel a little lifted up off the floor, but connect energetically down through the feet. I don't mean the skin is lifted up off the floor, but you might not really feel the press of your bones in quite the same way. That said, send energy down in exactly the same way you were doing before. Lift up through your arches. Draw up through your shins. Lift your kneecaps. Lift up through your thighs. Soft in your abdomen. Good. 
again, think of channels of energy running through your legs. Channels that carry that energy of pressing down and drawing up. And can that action help you feel the sides of your spine lengthening? feel that this is uncomfortable, do come out. Keep reigniting the intention in your legs, the attention to your legs. Arms crossed in one way, crossed in the second way. Now you can use your hands to press into the chair and to move your chest forward here. Take weight into your feet again and Lengthen from your hips to your armpits, slide your shoulder blades down your back, and then back up. Let yourself get used to being upright here. <laughs> and then come out of that, step your feet together, and come out of that. Now we're gonna do another favorite of mine. Um, and that's not going to be a good angle to show it from. So this is another two chair. Another two chair operation. And I'm just giving, you don't have to move to a different orientation. I'm just setting up an orientation that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm setting up the chair side by side, like in musical chairs. Does anybody remember musical chairs? I think I have some bad childhood memories connected to musical chairs. <clears throat> that said, I, I really love this. Oh. So as we had before, a sticky mat helping the uh, chairs hold together. So I have that now. And I'm going to need a bunch of pillows on one side of the chair set up and a bolster for the other side. I think this should have been a little bit more onto the mat. Yeah, the chair, the first chair is really more onto the mat. And then I have a blanket an extra blanket, so I have, it's like I've made a longer bolster here. So any any method that you have available at home to make a longer bolster, you can do that. And now I know that a few of you are taller than me and actually would need to make all of this higher. And you could do this pose, by the way, on a, like at the side of a uh, bed depending on how high your bed is. You could just build up the surface of your bed. Um, you could do it on the side of the counter. Um, you can use your ingenuity. Or you can do it with no support at all. <laughs> so those are your options. This pose is called uh, Prasarita Padasana, spreading of the foot pose. And uh, I'm taking my feet as wide as I need to in order to once again get a relationship between my support and that fold at the top of my thighs. And then I'm gonna lengthen my body out over the support, taking my uh, belly 
onto the, bol the bolster. And feel free to add an additional blanket if it's, it's difficult for you to feel like, like you're really supported with your bolster. Then I take a trifold blanket. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of a hard time arranging my trifold blanket for my head. And rest your forehead on, it's either a trifold or however, you just need a, enough of a pile there under your forehead so that you can breathe. And then once you're set up and you feel your front body supported, and you could also play with widening or narrowing your feet. Again, take your awareness to each foot. An equal press in the left foot and the right foot. An equal press in the ball mounds. The, the big toe ball mounds. The little toe ball mounds. The inner heel. The outer heel. Lift up the arches. Lift the kneecaps. Imagine here, too, that you're drawing the thigh bones into your hips. Try to feel your whole front body Lengthening along the bolster. Let yourself be supported by the bolster. So in some ways you're letting go to this pressure on the front body. And in other ways, you're keeping an alertness in your legs in this pose. The press of the feet, the lift of the kneecaps, the drawing your thigh bones into your hips. Notice if your feet start to feel like they're sort of sliding out sideways. Try to keep the quality of downness in the feet. And as you do that, you may find your inner thighs working more. Your inner knees alerted. your breath move through you. Slowly come up from here. You can just walk your hands back in the bolster. And bring heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in, until you can come upright. Again, give yourself a couple of moments to get used to being upright. And then we're going to put aside these chairs. The next pose we're going to do is headstand. So if you're not practicing headstand, you can go right to setting up your sticky mat on the floor and sitting in bound angle, a sitting up bound angle pose. And we'll all join you there. You can just skip ahead of the video and go to there. So those of you who are doing headstand, I'm putting away my um, second chair now. I will use one. 
lounge chair later. And those of you who are doing headstand, um, I'm not going to, I mean, I can set a timer for my headstand. I don't think that that's uh, working to stay longer in headstand until you've been practicing it for a long time. To me, um, there's, there's limited value in it. I would say stay as long as in your headstand as you can that you feel that you're really maintaining the structure of the headstand. That's a much more value um, in my mind than just seeing how long you can stay. So either do the, the headstand completely at the wall. Well, I'll show it completely at the wall. I think that's what I've done on other days. <clears throat> so my, I, I take the knuckles of the hand all the way to the wall, and I bring my elbows in about the same distance as my outer shoulders. So there's a feeling of wrapping the arms around and then going down through the forearms, down through the wrists. You can jump up with two legs or take one leg up at a time. So now your forearms are like your feet. Be earthy through your forearms. Let your shoulder blades move towards the earth as well. As you do that, your armpits will lengthen. The shoulder blades actually do turn here, I should say. So it's really the outer shoulder blade that's moving down, but uh, I think it's, I don't need to necessarily feel that exactly happening on my back, but I very much want to keep the sense of going down through the arms. So the inner shoulder blade does rise because the shoulder blade is turning, and you'll feel your neck getting longer here. But keep that sense of pressure um, in the forearms. From that pressure down, reach up through your legs. Can you track? channels on the sides of the spine connecting to the reach of your legs. So please just stay here for longer if uh, it's feeling supported and good to you. I'm going to come down and move on, partly because my dog's walking around the room, and he's weirdly attracted to anybody who's turned upside down. <laughs> so, now if you, uh, also I, I didn't stay very long, but you can just stay in headstand. I mean, it, excuse me, once you come down, it is nicer to press the in child's pose for a bit before you come up. Okay, now, I've taken my Open my mat back up on the floor. And we'll all come back together here. And I'm going to take two blankets. And we're going to sit for a bit, and there's all kinds of different blanket arrangements you can do for this sitting. I've today taken sort of the, the edges of the blankets here, but you could also just be sitting up on a, a uh, pillow or something, or a block. You could be sitting up on a block here. We're going to come into uh, Upavishta Konasana. Uh, angle, big angle pose, spreading the legs, angle pose. <laughs> and <clears throat> it's nice to 
after all of these supported um, sort of inward poses where we're sort of at, at all these different perpendicular and uh, inverted orientations to gravity to come back to sitting and to feeling the gravity under our legs. Getting an alert on my computer. I'm going to hope that holds out. An alert about storage. <laughs> so uh, stretch out through the inner edges of your feet. Firm your inner knees. They may be feeling kind of alert anyway after some of those longer uh, holds that we did. And if you're if for you it works to sit flat on the floor, that, that is fine. <clears throat> Feel your thigh bone going down wherever you are sitting, down towards the floor, if not down into the earth. Lift up your side ribs. Now can you track that? The, can you feel with your breath all the way down the sides of your spine, down to the sitting bones? Feel your breath in that lower body. And now let's fold the legs back to bound angle pose. This now is upright bound angle pose. And I'm supporting with my hands behind me. Uh, my hands are on the blankets, they could be on the floor here. And I'm going to draw from the outer knees into the outer hips. Again, that's getting that feeling that, that, that I'm actually drawing my thigh bones into my hip sockets at the same time that now I'm lengthening from the inner groins out to the inner knees. So, bound angle pose. I can even work the inner feet apart. I actually think that's kind of a fun thing to do, <laughs> to roll my inner feet apart and the, you can feel how the knees want to release down a little bit more. That's, that's kind of a thrill for those of us who are a little tighter to experience that. <clears throat> and then I keep the outer edges coming together here as I keep widening my knees out. Okay, now we're uh, moving, going to move on towards some of our more, a little bit of more opening up the grind the other way than we've been doing. And first I'm going to start in hero's pose. Um, actually, Let's go ahead and set up for lying down hero's pose. Yeah. So I'm going to have, I think we've, all of you have been taking class with me <laughs> recently, have done this with me. And uh, I'm setting up a support for the lying, lying back part of the pose. You don't have to have a support as high as this support, but this is a nice basic one. You can have this front, this, and now this is going to be a support for my sitting bones. It can be either uh, flat here or it can be turned up. I could also put a blanket or a towel on top of it. So first, I'm going to sit in Virasana. Now, if you have a knee situation and folding this much in the knee doesn't work for you, you're going to first take your bolster, and you can bring your shins together, 
and sit up on the bolster. And then when we go back, you'll just put your legs in front of you. But if the knee is bending, then you sit in Virasana. And let's just take a few more arm, uh, arm actions here. I see my fingers together, rolling the palms forward, taking the palms up. And sometimes reaching up with the arms helps sharpen the awareness downward. So again, I'm going to go down to my sitting bones. And I'm going to try to feel a descending of the outer sitting bones and a lift of the inner sitting bones up through the pelvic floor, up through the sides of the spine, up to the palms. down and switch the fingers to the second side, down with the outer sitting bones, up with the inner sitting bones, up through the pelvic floor, up the sides of the spine. Release the arms down and now this will be yet again. A, I'm going to do a lift before I line my body back. So I lift, and then I'm trying to get the chair in contact just below the shoulder blades. So it's a little too high. I just slide it back a little bit. And there I feel, oh, yeah, yeah. That's where the shoulder You can go like, like that. <laughs> See, that's where the shoulder blades are. And then I lay my head back. You can... Push the chair way back. If you're a bigger body, um, anyway, do adjust so that you feel like uh, you you can you can be in whatever position you have. And and the props have created something have created something for you, <laughs> and that is pleasurable. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do an additional action here of lifting my sitting bones up off the block as I reach my arms back. That does two things. It helps adjust through the buttock area a little bit better than when I first went back, but it also gives a nice opening on the front of the hip flexors when I do that. Now I'm going to hold my elbows and do it again. Lift my sitting bones up, drop my elbows down, and release. So we're not just holding this pose, we're introducing a little movement here. And I'm introducing the movement to help me feel those sides of the spine, down to the thighs, in an ongoing way. And the final arm position I'm going to do here is, you don't have to, if, if you're a bigger body, it might not work to go underneath the chair. You could just open out your arms for this next one. But now I'm going to go under the top of the chair. Of course, this also only works if you have a, a backless chair, you have a backless chair. But otherwise, you can go around the chair or go wide. And lift the sitting bones up. Feel the, the action of the buttocks there and the back of the hamstrings to lift. And then release down. And as I do that for my body, I get an, a big stretch across the armpit, across the armpits. And that feels kind of nice, again, like, a, like an opening of the shutters. And can I feel the breath there, the prana there? Like a real springtime vitality. Now, uh, you can stay in that longer and you can adjust your arms to a different position. Or you can take your hands down by the sides of your feet, lift your chest to come up. You could also support the back of your head and do more of a rolling out of the pose. Okay, so let's move our chair. Okay. 
So as in as in many other classes, we are going to do a little active chaturush padasana, a four-footed pose or um, we call it bridge pose. And I'm going to do it today with a blanket folded this way, long, long wise. And I've got a block. So I'm putting the, the blanket more towards the side of the mat. And my shoulders are on the blanket, not my neck. And I'm going to practice the lift of the pelvis up. Again, that's that action in the buttocks, so lengthening across the frontal hips. And then I roll the shoulders under towards each other, one might say, and press my upper arm bones down as I lift the hips more. So it's always nice to do a couple of those before taking the block. Or maybe I should do, do a second one since I said a couple. <laughs> so I'm going to do a second one and lift higher. But I am going to be putting the block under my pelvis. But sometimes, as, as soon as we hold the block, I'll try to demonstrate this. Sometimes as soon as we hold the block, we actually do drop the hips. And we lose a sense of, well, what's the action that would get the hips high enough to put the block under it? So to have that imprint of how high the, the hips are and then to place the block, can, it's just a nice thing to return to. Now, it might be a little easier to get the block under today because we have the blanket under the uh, shoulders. So I hope you found that encouraging. <laughs> and now I'm going to lace my hands behind the block, roll my arms down again, and the arm bones, the upper arm bones do come towards each other as I do that. And now I'm going to creep my feet out on the floor. And this pose could be considered a, a supported bridge pose. Another name for it is uh, Duipada Viparita Dandasana. No, that's not right. It's really is bridge pose. Duipada Viparita Dandasana is actually um, uh, the thing on the top of your head. So, but I'm thinking about it because a danda is a staff. So my legs here, I'm trying to again get that sense of the channels through the legs, reaching out through my inner heels. So you could think of one channel being on your outer leg, another channel being on your inner leg. And I'm connecting that to the channels of the sides of the spine and the lift of the top chest. Soft in your eyes and your shoulders. And you let your breath travel the whole length of your hair, all the way to your feet. Bend your legs in. Also, if you weren't able to get the press of your legs straight, you could have just stayed in the pose with that legs. That would also be fine. <clears throat> and come out by lifting up high, placing the black block flat, and coming down. And then lifting up again. Final pose is, I'm going to, you'll have a choice of final pose between a chair shoulder stand, 
Well, actually, you could choose any form of shoulder stand you like. That's, that's one choice. Any form of shoulder stand you like. I will be showing a form of shoulder stand, uh, chair, chair shoulder stand. But if shoulder stand isn't appropriate for you, I'm going to suggest today that you do uh, legs up the wall, either just lying flat with your legs up the wall, or the Viparita Parani, in which you place a mat at the wall, and you take your bolster, let me move all this away, And again, I think you've all done this in class. And the getting in is kind of the tricky part. I'm just going to talk through the getting in. I lay on my side, like I'm laying on the side of my bed, but I put the side of my hip up on the bolster. And it's a little bit of an upside down feeling already. He, but this shoulder is down. Notice this shoulder is down. Then I roll, and I'm in a pretty good position. I'm pretty close to the shape that I want here. But I can do an additional adjustment by pressing my feet into the wall, pulling the wall down, which is an action we just did except on the floor. And then I can adjust my bolster. So if I ended up sort of far away from the wall, okay, so let's say I ended up far away from the wall here. I lift up, and I walk my shoulders in. That's, that's a, a good shoulder action. It's nice to figure out how to move your shoulders like feet. Then I can also lift up my bolster and bring it in towards my back ribs. So there's a little gap between the bolster and the wall, between my sitting bones and the wall. And this is a really great pose. Actually, if you wanted to do this one and then do shoulder stand, that's also great. So you don't even have to choose between them. You could do both of them. But I'm going to come out of this one now. And show you the setup for chair shoulder stand. And chair doing the shoulder stand coming off of the chairs we're going to do is really one of the all-time wonderful poses to do when one is feeling tired. <laughs> because it really, it does not take the effort of shoulder stand and it gives, and it gives a, the shape of the pose, which like encourages the benefits of the poses, of the pose in a really wonderful way. For this one, I'm, I have a sticky mat back on the chair, and you don't have to have uh, your chair on a sticky mat. In fact, why don't I demonstrate this without my chair on a sticky mat? So, the sticky mat's on the chair. Then, again, Depending on your body, you're going to make different choices about what's going to support your shoulders and what's going to support your hips. Um, the standard shoulder support is two blankets folded lengthwise like this. So I've got two blankets folded lengthwise and those go in front of the chair. Then for the hips, Many people, I might even say that most people, are going to be happy with one blanket. And that you fold more in the, the chunk, uh, not lengthwise, but the narrower way. And that's, for most bodies, this is the right amount. <clears throat> I am going to take more of a support for my body. And that's because I want the support to be giving me a sense of lift in my lower back. I don't like to feel like my buttocks have fallen down uh, on, on these vertebrae. So 
uh, having a little sense of uh, like that ongoing smoothing. But again, that's different for different bodies. So a lot of you are experienced practitioners and you've already figured out what your setup is. <laughs> I'm taking a great big bolster for my setup. I know I like how it feels. Um, actually, for today, because I'm trying to demonstrate for you, I'm going to take two folded blankets. I just want to show what it's going to look like for you a little bit more. So the bolster is pretty high, so it has a different look. So here we go. The, the legs go outside the chair, not inside, outside. Holding the chair with my hands, though I have to move my hands, but I'm still holding the chair with the hands. And the back of the legs go over the back. And now I have to use the principles of a teeter-totter. That is to say, I'm moving weight that way. I guess I'm the teeter-totter in this analogy. So I'm aware that I have to keep the weight moving in that direction in order for me to roll down over the chair, because now there's more weight going in this. Now see how I'm still holding the chair? And my legs are down, so the whole weight of my legs is keeping the chair nicely anchored down. And then I start to slide so there's more weight coming off of the chair, but it does not tip over, and it does not tip over because of still all the way in my legs is, is on it. I slide low enough that I can take my hand, arms inside the chair. If you have wider shoulders, you just keep your arms outside the chair. And then I take hold of the back legs of the chair. And once I have hold of the back legs of the chair, then I take the back of my heels onto the back of the chair. I'm not sure why I didn't take my glasses off. Do take your glasses off for this one. <clears throat> and uh, then I let the tops of my shoulders, I slide more until the tops of my shoulders come to the head support. And now I can take my, the legs up as my shoulder, I come into letting more weight come onto my shoulders. So there's a little bit of activity here in my shoulders. I'm rolling the upper arm bones, externally rotating them, and I'm drawing them towards each other. So, and I'll, I feel as I do that, that the, my cervical spine lifts. I'm not pushing the, 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 the bone of the cervical spine down into the blanket, but it's, it's actually lofted a little bit. And now, I get a view of my legs here, which is fun. <laughs> and again, so that, so I have this sort of, sort of additional contemplation looking at my legs, contemplation of the channels, the inner legs lengthening up, the outer legs maybe even drawing back down to the outer hips. Pull the outer edges of my feet down to my outer hips. As you stay in the pose, let yourself feel movements of your breath in the pose. Where does the breath go in this shape? Jenny Kapiller described each pose as being an archetype. So what is the archetype of this shape? The lofted chest, the streaming legs. heart is above your head. Your th 
throat is soft. Another position of the legs we can take here is to reach the legs back over the back of the chair. And that might be a little bit too much stretch for you across, across the front thighs or in your low back. If you have a yoga partner, they can put a bolster under your legs for you here. Um, or just don't go into this part of the pose. Or maybe stretch towards it and then come back out of it. Now place your feet on the chair and come into another bound angle pose, Baddha Panasta. Feel the quality of width that brings. Like a whole different archetype. To come out of this, I have to keep awareness in my feet. They're, they're important actors here. I'm hooking my heels back on the back of the chair, sliding my arms out from in between the chair, and then holding the chair somewhere on the outside of the chair. And then I can lower myself, resisting with my heels, bit by bit by bit, sliding off bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And then I can finally, once I'm low enough, Move my heels off the back of the chair, put them on the seat of the chair, and then lower my hips onto the blankets. You may have to adjust your clothing around your neck after that sliding. And just take a moment after you've come out of your pose to feel the reverberations of Now to come into Shavasana, I would suggest moving either one of the blankets or both of the blankets from under your hips. I'm going to actually go ahead and move both of the blankets and open up um, a blanket to lie on. You could open up your sticky mat if you have to be underneath the blanket. And then I'm going to take away these blankets because my legs aren't that long. But but if if the if the spacing works for your legs to stay there with the blankets, that's that's fine. Now you don't have to have your legs up on a on a chair here. This this will be our final shavasana. I mean our final pose in shavasana. You don't have to have your legs up on a chair. You could lay perfectly flat. It's equally good. I like the effect when my legs are up like this of feeling the whole low back connecting to the floor, widening, softening. So whatever position you're in, try to feel where your body meets the floor. Feel those points spreading. Release the front body to the back body. Let the back body spread.
your breath be like the practice of one thing? inner life force in you track your attention feel the thatness the isness of you Extend your next exhalation and deepen your next inhalation. And let your hands come to your ribs and your eyes open. Let your focus be soft. And then roll to your side. Let your head come up last as you come up to sitting. 